Hi guys, welcome back to Creative Tap. Now in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to use shape layers and the trim paths feature to animate a heart rate monitor. So you'll see an example on the left by there. Um, so yeah, let's jump straight on into After Effects and let's do this. So before we jump into After Effects, let's have a look at what we're going to be creating. So here's a little animation of a heart rate monitor or heartbeat monitor, whatever you want to call it. And you can add some sort of beeps to this if you want, but this is what we're going to be creating inside of After Effects. So let's jump into After Effects. I'm going to go and create a new project. You don't need any um, resources or project files for this. Um, you can use a sort of image as a guide, which I'll show you later, but let's just jump on in and make a new composition. 1920, 1080, 25 frames per second. Duration I've got is 400 frames. I'm gonna change that to 200 frames, which is eight seconds if yours is in the seconds kind of mode. So 200 frames or eight seconds, click OK. By the way, to change it between frames and seconds, if you control, click, here it'll change it between seconds and frames and that'll update in your composition settings as well anyway that's not what we're here for let's jump into what we need to do so first of all i'm going to go layer new solid and i want to get a really really dark green okay so basically nearly black um so the hex code of mine is zero five one and then triple zero if you want to use that click ok and let's name this bg for background and click OK. And you can see it's a very dark green. Next, I'm gonna to come to my effect, effects and presets and I'm gonna type in grid and I'm gonna drag my grid effect to this. I'm now going to go, um, I think the values I used before were, if we, first of all, sorry, change size from to width and height. And then I think it was 140 pixels by 140 pixels is what I went for. Yeah, so change it to width and height, 140 by 140. You can make this 70 by 70 if you want smaller squares, but I'm gonna make it 140 by 140 for mine. And I'm gonna change these to a sort of just a dark green again and click OK. And I'm gonna change my blending mode to screen so that green comes through now in the background. And that's our background kind of set up. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna actually draw our um, heart rate line. Now to do this, you can either kind of eyeball it or you can import an image. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually import an image, just a guide that I've got from, from online. If you type into Google, heart rate monitor, there's loads out there. So I'm literally just going to import this image, click and drag it down here, and just wait till it comes up. I'm gonna scale it appropriately, I think around about that. Now the reason I like this one is because it's actually got some variations in it, so it kinda of looks more realistic. I'm gonna just scale mine up, use whatever you want, whatever one you want, um, and I'm gonna do that and by bringing the opacity down to 50, that'll kind of let us now line this up. Um, so this starting line by here, I wanna line up with this line, and yeah, that, that's, that's looking good. Okay, so let's now lock this layer and lock this background layer. And I'm gonna get my pen tool, so none of these can be selected now. I'm gonna get my pen tool, and I'm gonna start um, just clicking and for tracing now over this. Now my stroke is set to eight, so I may just for argument's sake bring that down to two so we can see more clearly and I'll change color later. So actually I'm gonna undo that because I wanna go more on that line. So just line it up better, there we go. And I'm now going to trace this heart rate monitor all the way around, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna time lapse the recording while I do this. Now that I've gotten to this bit, what I wanna do is I'm gonna bring my line over to about here before I start the next one. So I now need to bring this little guide to the side to line up so that I can carry on.
Now that I've completed that, I haven't actually made it all the way to the other side. And I'm gonna show you how we can sort that out if you've got the same issue. So I'm gonna lock my shape layer or just click off first and then lock my shape layer, unlock the guide by here. And I'm actually gonna delete the guide. I don't need it anymore. If I now unlock the shape layer, what I can do is I can get my um, sort of uh, selection tool, come down now into the contents, come into the shape, and select your path. And what I want to do is I want to space these out basically. So I'm going to click and drag over all the points, so not all of them, sorry, all of them up to here. And what I can do now is hold shift while I drag this. By holding shift, it just drags it left and right, otherwise you're kind of going up and down. So hold shift, space these out a bit, and yeah, like that one in the middle. And now I'm going to click and drag just to get these ones and hold shift, drag it over to here. So we've now got three which are evenly spaced, okay? So what I wanna do first of all is just rename this to heart beat um, or heart beater. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm now gonna change the stroke color to uh, light green, something like this. And I'm gonna increase the stroke to say 15. That's too strong. So how about 10? No, I think about eight. I think I'm happy with eight. Now, looking at mine and looking at this one I did earlier, you'll notice that this one, um, this one has curved lines and that's just the kind of, a, that's what I went for. The one we've got this time has got these angular lines and that's just the style, okay? So you can obviously go through, if you wanted yours to have curved lines, just make sure that, you know, you're kind of, you clicking and dragging to make these handles, okay? Um, just like that. Uh, but I've cho chosen this time to go for just different, different angular ones, okay? So I'm gonna delete that shape too. Right, now we need to animate this. So what I wanna do is come down into the contents, click add, and I'm gonna click uh, trim paths, okay? So what we wanna do is uh, we want to animate this trim path, so let's bring this up. You can also, to get rid of this blue kind of um, motion, this blue path by here, if you just click this, it'll now get rid of it, which is a lot easier. So this trim path, what we want to do is we want to say, let's, for the start, let's say 20, and for the end, let's say 40. Um, no. 40, right? So what we want to do now is basically animate this offset. So it's always showing between 20 and 40% of it, but we're just animating through this, okay, through this offset, and it's just going to animate like that. There's more things we need to do, but that's what we're going to start with. So I think 20 and 40, let's offset this so it starts at the beginning. And now what I'm going to do is alt click, and I'm going to type in time times, and I think 50 was what I used before, um, and then just click off. And that times, by the way, was a little star. It was shift and eight on the keyboard. So now this just animates over time. If you want to speed that up, um, what you can do is go, right, okay, screw it. Let's go time times 100. And, you know, that'll go twice the speed as we were before. So just increase or decrease that number if you want to go faster or slower. I think my stroke is still a little bit strong, so I'm going to go to six. Um, actually, let's just make sure I select it. I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to even go to four. Yeah, four is looking a lot nicer. Okay. Now, next, what I want to do is I want to come down into the um, stroke and I want to go to taper and I want to increase my start length. Okay. So, what's going to happen now? I'm increasing that to 100. What's happening now is that's actually fading off gradually, okay? Um, so you can have that fade, which, which is, looks more realistic and looks nicer. Next thing we want to do is we want to have a sort of glowy bit at the front. So what I'm going to do is duplicate heartbeat by hitting Control D while it's selected. Right click, rename this to um, dot, okay? I, I don't know what else to call it. Um, if we just solo this out now, it's basically the same thing by soloing it, by clicking there, we're just only seeing that layer. Now what I want to do is go to the contents, shape, no sorry, trim paths, and I want to increase the 20 to about 39 I think. So basically, if we were to do this, we're only playing through that little bit, okay, that little front bit. So what we can do now is increase the stroke on this one, because if we un... Um, unsolo it. All we're all we're changing is basically we've got this 
dot on top of the pre-existing one, okay? If we go to our stroke and go say 15, you'll now notice when I turn the eye on and off, it's a lot there, okay? And what we can do is go and get a glow, chuck our glow on there and maybe duplicate it. So now what we've got is we've got that at the front and it's quite solid. So what I might do is I might put a little blur on it as well. Um, let's go, which one? Gaussian blur, where is it? Or fast blur? Um, Gaussian blur, let's just chuck that on there and let's see if that helps the shape a little bit. And let's put the blur before the glows as well. And there, increase that. And you can also decrease the stroke, so let's try 10. It's still clearly there, and we've got that dot now at the front, so that leads it. Okay, a few more things you can do to try and make this a bit better. I'm gonna select both of them, so Shift Select, Control Shift C, and what am I gonna call it? Um, let's call it Heartbeat. There we go, pretty simple. Spelt it wrong again. And right, what you can do now is notice when it does this little animation, it's quite slow doing this, doing the little spike things, and you expect that to be a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is right-click the layer, go to Time, and enable Time Remapping. It gives us a keyframe. I'm now going to come forward, hitting page down to go frame by frame. I'm now going to right, go through this until we get to the end. And I'm now going to hit new keyframe and it's given me a keyframe for 23 frames. Now if I bring this further, what it's going to do is actually taken that original 23 frames and by the time we get to 10 frames, it's actually played through the 23. So it's what it's done is we set a keyframe at the beginning of that sort of blip animation and at the end and we brought it closer. So that now goes really fast, that bit. So again, let's just come forward in time and we've got a new blip about to start. So hit the stopwatch, come forward to the end of it and it takes about, um, let's see how many frames this is. So it starts on frame 19 and we finish on frame 42. So that's like 23 frames. Let's make another keyframe here. And now we wanna drag this keyframe closer. So what we should see happen is these things by here, these are slow now because we haven't done the effect. But back here, you can see these little blips happen faster. So you'll wanna come through again. So let's go here, create a keyframe, come to the end of that blip animation. See, it should take until this point, but set a keyframe, drag that keyframe back. So this blip now happens a lot faster. And you can carry on doing that. So come to here, set the keyframe, come forward, and it ends by there. Set the keyframe, drag it back. And what we've got now is a nice little heart rate animation and the blips happen, apart from the ones now, because we haven't keyframed them, the blips happen really, really fast, like you'd expect. So that's basically it. Now again, looking at mine, mine is more curved by here. The only difference in the ones we've got is mine happens to be more curved and it's basically because of the style I went for. I'm not actually, I'm not actually sure whether I like this style because it almost looks a bit too perfect. I think I do actually, even though you could say it looks a bit more rough, I do actually prefer this one by here because each little blip is different from each other and it looks a little bit more um, chaotic. The other one looks too clean. So um, that's how you do a little heart rate monitor inside of After Effects using the trim paths and a little expression and the timing mapping. So hope you learned a few things there. Uh, cheers for tuning in and hopefully I'll see you in another one of my tutorials. Mm -hmm.